We distinguished between pharyngitis and bacterial rhinosinusitis and looked at causative pathogens. We looked at empiric treatment for bacterial rhinosinusitis and streptococcal pharyngitis. Now, let's recommend an appropriate duration of therapy for rhinosinusitis and pharyngitis. For the duration of therapy of acute bacterial uh, rhinosinusitis, the drug of choice is high dose amoxicillin clavulinate. So that would be uh, two grams of amoxicillin along with 125 milligram of clavulinate given twice a day. And this is typically for five to seven days. And uh, of course, amoxicillin uh, clavulinate high dose is actually available um, as an extended release and because the pill gets really large, so you can see here the size, it would actually be about uh, 22 to 23 uh, millimeters in length. Uh, this is a large, uh, large pill. So they actually had to split it into two pills. So each pill includes a thousand milligram of amoxicillin and 62.5 milligram of clavulonic acid. So two pills together will uh, make up the high dose amoxicillin clavulinate, which would be uh, 2000 milligrams of amoxicillin. Alternatively, if the patient cannot tolerate uh, amoxicillin clavulinate, so for example, penicillin allergy, regardless of what the uh, reaction was, uh, the alternative would be doxycycline. Uh, so that would be for uh, five to seven days. In fact, all uh, recommendations are for five to seven days. And then if really there is no other choice, then we can use respiratory fluoroquinolones uh, such as levofloxacin and moxifloxacin. Uh, and these are once a day dosing uh, for five to seven days. And of course, if the reaction was anaphylaxis, we'll do the same thing. So doxycycline, if the patient can tolerate it, if there is no other choice because of the black box warning, uh, then the fluoroquinolone would be last option. Now for the duration of therapy of acute streptococcal pharyngitis, uh, you know, you can choose between penicillin. So penicillin would be the narrowest option. Uh, unfortunately, uh, adherence could be an issue with penicil with oral penicillin because it's uh, typically given uh, four times a day with the lower dose. Uh, or you can do a higher 500 milligram dose and give it twice a day to improve adherence. And this will be for 10 days. Alternatively, amoxicillin is an option. So even if you give a high dose of 1000 milligram, you can get away with once a day dosing to even further improve adherence. Or you can do the uh, lower dose of 500 milligram twice a day, and this will also be uh, for 10 days. And then of course, if you really want to do one dose and be done with it, you can do the intramuscular injection of penicillin G uh, at the 1 million unit. And of course, this would be uh, you know, uh, obviously painful. So a lot of patients might not want to do this. And this is, uh, you know, more uh, realistic for people who have adherence issues. Now, if someone has a penicillin allergy, which uh, the reaction is non-anaphylaxis, you can, we can use first generation cephalosporin like uh, cephalexin for 10 days, uh, or we can use um, cephadroxol uh, once a day for 10 days. Now, if the reaction is anaphylaxis, then, uh, you know, it's not a good idea to use cep uh, cephalosporins. In that case, we have to use non-beta lactams. So oral clindamycin would be an option for 10 days. Alternatively, uh, also uh, clarithromycin for 10 days or azithromycin uh, for five days would actually improve adherence because this is the uh, shorter duration. This concludes this presentation.